I'm going to show you how to make um, this uh, fur text effect. It's a pretty cool effect. It works on all different different types of backgrounds, different types of fur. Looks pretty good. I think this one's my favorite one out of all of them. I think. I don't know. I like this one a lot too. I, I made this one with uh, without like a white background or whatever just to show that you could put it on pretty much anything you want um, you can use almost any font that you want you want to kind of try to stay away from the font that you know um, the spacing between the letters and stuff like that where they're not too squished because the effect that we're gonna do or whatever the outside fur it could blend all the way in and it just wouldn't look right so you need to have you have to try to avoid that this is gonna be kind of a quick tutorial today one of a shorter one it's pretty cool I'm gonna go file new then I'm using 1280 by 720 going okay and we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer to start off with then we're gonna grab our text tool and the the text that I'm using it's called die nasty yeah we're die nasty it's on defont.com I'll leave a link in the description for it and I'm using um, font size of 440 pixels just gonna type out GIMP here I'm gonna click on our alignment tool click on the text and then click this one and then that one and we are going to go ahead and right click on the GIMP text layer and go to layer to image size and let's see we are going to go back to the layer uh, hold down alt and click and then go up to select and then go all the way down to path then control shift a to deselect it and we just made a path of that text we're going to need it later later or well actually coming up here pretty quick we're going to need it so we're going to go um, up to file open as layers and you could download font google or not font i'm sorry you could google um the fur textures on google you could find them all sorts of places you don't have to use the ones that i'm using let's see which one do i want to use just use this one for three just go ahead and go open and then you could press the minus key on your keyboard to zoom out and then shift T to bring up the scale and we're just going to scale this down to about right there press scale press M on your keyboard for the move tool and just move it into place where you'd like it and it looks like I need to scale it up just a little bit shift T again and I'll just push it out from the side a little bit aim on the keyboard again for the move tool and that looks okay for me and you can do shift plus on your keyboard or hold down control and use your mouse wheel it's totally up to you we're gonna right click on this and then go to layer to image size we're gonna go back to your pass tab right click and then go path to selection we're gonna go back over to the layers and we're gonna right click add layer mask a white full opacity is fine we're going to go to select invert then we're gonna come over here and grab our paint bucket tool make sure your colors on black and just click and now that part's masked out go control shift a to deselect and we're gonna put our color on white and then we're gonna grab our brush tool and this brush that I'm using is called DP brushes it's out of the Photoshop brushes you could google it and look for DP brushes um, and you'll find it on the internet I will leave a link or I will make a brush of my own of this to give to you either or and we're going to click when if you get the DP brushes there's gonna be a few brushes and you're just gonna click on this one right here and for this the size we're gonna start out with a size of around 20 pixels 
you'd have your aspect ratio the same, angle the same. Um, you want to go over here to this dynamics tab and you want to click on it and you want to because the one that you will be on is the one basic, basic you want to scroll down and go to dynamics random and click on that and then you want to click on apply jitter and you could this fade link you could you could play with this stuff if you want you could reverse and stuff I'm just leaving it as default um, you want to apply jitter I'm applying a jitter of 1.55 then go down and I click smooth stroke and I turn the quality all the way up to a hundred um, you could change the weight and stuff if you want that's up to you and that's it the other reason why we created that path is because we're going to stroke to path so we are we're needing that path so we're going to go up to <clears throat> make sure this color is on white we're going to go up to edit stroke to path and then you want to it'll be up here stroke line you want to click on stroke with paint tool and then make sure paint brush is uh, selected and then you want to emulate brush dynamics and then click stroke and we're going to do this quite a few times so just edit stroke path stroke edit stroke path stroke edit stroke path stroke we're going to do that about four times with that and then we're going to turn the size up to about 25 and then we're going to do it a few more times edit stroke path hit stroke edit stroke path stroke and we did that twice and now we're going to change the angle a little bit of it I mean we got the jitter on and stuff but I just I'm changing the angle and making sure that when it jitters the angle changes also so we're gonna to go to edit stroke path stroke and we're gonna turn the size back down to 15 and we'll reduce the angle all the way down to something like that that's fine that's totally up to you guys you guys can just go ahead and play around with that and we're just going to edit stroke a bunch more times edit stroke and what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it look like there's fur on the outside and we want to get rid of these hard edges of the font so just keep on doing that until you do that edit stroke edit stroke edit stroke path and then stroke and let's turn the size back up to I don't know around 22 edit stroke path and stroke edit stroke path and stroke let's change the angle again edit stroke path edit stroke path edit stroke path edit stroke path and just keep on doing it until you're you're satisfied you uh, just go through and you could you know make the size bigger or smaller if you want it's totally up to you I about got this the way I want it maybe go up size a little bit and change the angle a little bit more edit stroke path and then stroke and then you're just gonna do this like I said a bunch of times until you get it to how you like it and this is called the sexy fur bring out all the sexiness in it alrighty I think I'm pretty happy with that so I'm gonna go over here and you can click down here on the duplicate button or you could go control shift D and that duplicates it and then click make sure you click on the layer mask and then right click apply layer mask and then we're gonna go over here to layer and then down to our layer effects and we're gonna do a inner shadow and with the colors black um, the blend mode is on burn Opacity at 100%, angle at negative 93.8, distance 5, um, the edge, you click on the edge, choke 0, and size 33, 
Um, the contours on linear, noise zero. We could go ahead and preview that and see how that looks. And I think that looks pretty good. It just darkens it up a little bit and gives it a little bit more, more um, depth of field. If you, if you want to say say it like that, I don't know. It's totally up to you what you want to call it. And we're going to just go ahead and, and that's fine for my preferences. We're just going to go ahead and click OK. Just wait for it to do its job there. And then we're going to go down here on this layer that we created when we first started. Make sure your colors are on black. We're going to grab our circular ellipse tool and we are going to make the shadows now and we're just going to do something like that and then we're going to hold down the shift key and add another one hold, while that shift key is still held down add an, another one but this one I'm going to go control Z control Z I'm going to go all the way across with it so we'll start over here with shift still held down and one for right here we're going to grab our paint bucket tool and fill it and then control shift A to deselect and we're going to go up to filters blur Gaussian blur and I'm going to blur this one by I don't know around 36 pixels press OK and then we are going to make another layer press OK and we're going to do the same process over again but we're going to go a little bit more up into it and just come down just a little bit then hold shift and do the same thing and then just we're going to make the little shadows for all these different areas then grab our paint bucket tool fill them and control shift a to deselect. We're going to go back up to uh, filters, then blur, then Gaussian blur, and we're going to blur these by 30 pixels. Press OK. And then we are going to grab our move tool and we are going to just move them up into place just a little bit. And that's fine. Right click, um, layered image size. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and click on both these to link these together and let's just with the arrow key press the down button or the down arrow I'm sorry on your keyboard I'm just gonna move that down just a little bit just like that then right click layer to image size right click layer to image size then unlink these and then go below this layer oh and another thing I forgot to mention if you don't know how um, if you don't have the layer and layer effects I have a tutorial on how to install these and and where to get them just go ahead and look on my channel and the video will be there let's go on this this GIMP layer and let's go ahead and make a new layer and let's go ahead and push that all the way to the top and let's go wait wait oops I'm getting way ahead of myself let's go to the background layer and let's add a background and so we're gonna go to file open as layers and let me go in here and let me find my textures let's see what do we want to do for this one Let's see here. I'll grab that one. And we are going to just zoom out by pressing minus on our keyboard or control and using the mouse wheel. Or you could go ahead and go down here and zoom out that way if you would like. And we're going to go shift T to bring up our scale tool. And we're going to scale this 
way down. Scale. And we're going to zoom back in by pressing Shift Plus on our keyboard or Control and using the mouse wheel. Press M uh, to grab our move tool and let's see here. Let's see. Do I like that background? I don't know if I like that background. Let's go ahead and delete that and grab something else. File open as layers and let's see I'll just go ahead and add the curved wood floor again so we're gonna zoom out um, sh uh, minus on your keyboard let's see let's shift T and let's scale this way way down Press scale. And on our keyboard, let's move it into place where we want it. Let's zoom back in, pressing shift plus on our keyboard. And see where do we want it. Right here is fine for me. We are going to click on this very top layer and we're going to go to layer, new from visible and then we are going to click on the uh, layer below it and we're gonna bring it up to the top and then we're gonna go to tools GEGL operation click down here and scroll all the way down to the bottom until you see vignette and we're gonna put a Viggy on here and we're gonna raise the softness all the way up and let's see We'll turn the radius down just a little bit and then all the rest is fine that looks good to me press OK Let's see. yeah that looks good to me we could go ahead and click go to the bottom one click down here we can add some kind of gradient to it too if we'd like let's see let's grab an orange and a brown and let's click on our gradient tool and let's go ahead and grab from the top up let's control Z that and then let's go to overlay or no soft light let's see and then let's drop the opacity down to about 50% it just brings out the color a little bit more yeah that looks good to me and that is how you make the sexy fur effect you could use this on on like I said many different fonts many different furs um, it looks pretty awesome if you ask me like I said they you could do all different sorts of furs I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this um, taught you guys something. If you have any questions, please leave some comments. Like, subscribe. There will be a bunch more coming where this one came from. Thank you. You could um, download the project files on my website. I will leave a link to my website. and You can download the uh, this actual project that I just did so you can look over it yourself. Um, and it will have this image that I made and let's see and there's tons of other tutorials and downloads and stuff on there you can go ahead and check that out if you'd like like cool. I, I appreciate it and have a good day